Welcome back to Wingnuts, the home of micro maintenance. And on this episode, we're investigating a crack on the keel tube of a C42. A little bit late to uh, the cutting table with this one because this was never a project that we intended to film. Uh, for those of you that follow our channel or follow any form of social media that we put out there, we don't film every single thing that we do. We've not enough time in the day. But this certainly wasn't one that we'd earmarked as being a potential YouTube uh, special um, because it originally came in for a bit of a birthday. It's uh, 20 plus years old. It's a kit built C42 and it's also an LAA aircraft. Shelley took her first look around uh, the engine so she could do a detailed report before she started, which is what we do on every aircraft. So let's have a look at it, what it looks like now. And there were lots and lots of little things, fuel pipes being cracked. Uh, as an example, a few wear and tears on brackets. But what she did spot, which was very concerning, or irritating is probably a better word, very concerning, irritating, was that the engine cradle is cracked. So those of you who don't know what a C42 engine cradle looks like, it's one of these. Fits there, engine sits on top. Now, we've got several C42s in, in our school, and I've replaced the engine cradle on ours I think four times. We also found, um, whilst we were looking as well, that the rudder pedals were quite loose. The bushing that goes through the main keel tube um, had worn and there was a lot of play um, in, the, uh, in the rudders, so that was an observation. But, so anyway, we then ordered the parts that we needed, ordered the engine cradle from TLAC, who are fantastic, um, and sent one straight out to us. Fortunately, they got one on the shelf, which was great. But when it turned up, the holes for the uh, engine cradle were 10 mil holes. But the holes that were in the keel tube were 8 mil holes. So straight away, oh, you sent us the wrong you sent us the wrong engine cradle. No, we haven't. Oh, no. So then it turns out that with this being a factory home-built C42 and 20 years old, that there's a slight difference in parts and they no longer make the engine cradle for the 8mm holes. The downside on that is you can't just go ahead and drill holes in tubes. It's a structural part. There is mod applications. There is permission. Uh, to seek from the manufacturer. It's quite a detailed process. So we went down that journey and needless to say, we got permission to drill those holes so long as the tube, the main keel tube, didn't have any cracks in it. And that's when this journey started going downhill because in order to inspect this keel tube correctly, you've got to take off the lower scuttle. That means full everything out that you could possibly get out in order to drop. We then use the crack penetrative die, which you can probably see the remnants of on here. We have cleaned that up. Um, and lo and behold, um, we found a crack in the keel tube. Fortunately, the cracks were in places and such that we were able to fit a sleeve, uh, which is again a known mod, whether it's a BMEA, LAA or, or whatever, C42 or Icarus provide a sleeve uh, that goes inside the keel tube to support um, the strengthening in that area. And again, there's, there's a whole process of making sure you've got the right one, making sure with this. And then it turns out that the nose leg that's on this one it doesn't fit the new sleeve that's coming through. So we've had to change the bracketry uh, and all sorts to now take a new nose leg. So what started off as being an engine service has become somewhat of a quite a large job. Anyway, the parts arrived um, yesterday um, and I thought you might be interested in that. So hence the reason why we don't have any footage of us stripping this down. I might have a few bits of us inspecting it varying bits, but this is where we're picking this job up. We are 
going to be fitting the sleeve into this heel. Okay then, so the parts, as I said, have arrived from TLAC. Um, we've got quite a number of parts that we need to fit uh, and modify. This is the sleeve itself, which is a section of the keel that's been um, elongated or cut so that it can squeeze inside the, the main keel tube there. Uh, we've got new brackets for the nose wheel leg assembly and the front strut and also we have uh, new magna bulb rivets now these are extremely strong rivets uh, you won't be able to fasten these in particularly with a handgun it's going to be a pneumatic riveter required for those we've stripped this down already to a point where we were happy but certainly now seeing our collection of parts is going to be a bit more modifications or a bit more stripping down that we need to do one of which is we got to remove the front strut uh, varying different designs on c42s but on the older ones the front strut goes through one hole and then come fixes um, on the underside um, of the bottom of the keel whereas on the newer ones this hole's not there and it sits on top uh, ours is the one that goes straight through so as you can see we can't slide that through so we're going to have to remove the front strut that sets us up with uh, lots of other additional issues because obviously the wings are still on this one um, we also need to drill out carefully um, the old or the existing magna bulb rivets having drilled these out before that's no mean task because these rivets are very strong um, so that's probably going to be the first job for me. We are replacing all of the bracketry, so it's nice to know that I'm not going to be damaging the keel because you don't want to be doing a repair like this and then cause a bigger problem because you've oversized the holes um, that you're going to rivet. So I'm happy to go ahead and do that. So new day, new challenge. Um, we had a good session yesterday just de-riveting the varying brackets that have got to come off and there is no two ways about it. We kind of knew it anyway. The front strut has got to come out which leads us into varying other issues. In order to remove the front strut and to be safer means we're going to have to remove the wings. So what's turned out to be a difficult jobs now a little bit more difficult. I don't like taking the wings off an aircraft unless we really have to. Um, because they're much safer on the aircraft than they are in the corner of a workshop. So that's just my concerns on taking wings off. Anyway, I'm going to enlist the help of our good friend, mine and yours, Giles Fowler, and we're going to get the wings off this aircraft and see if we can progress a little bit further. Today. Front strut was relatively difficult to remove because it had all been siliconed in, but it came out eventually. And then we were able to remove the upper and lower uh, brackets that are on there. And removing those magna rivets is probably one of the most tedious jobs that you will ever do. However, very reassuring that they are a good rivet. Anyway, um, it's now all stripped back. I've cleaned it as best I can, get rid of all the um, crack inspection and now I'm going to go for my first fit of the sleeve. Uh, this could be a good end or a terrible end to a long day. Let's see how it goes. So, just finished doing all the drilling, or so I thought. Um, lots of holes to be drilled in this new tube and sleeve. 
And just when I was getting all excited, because I've just drilled all the holes out, I thought I'll just offer the brackets up, just, just, just double check. So that's the old bracket. And that's the new bracket. So uh, you can see it's significantly bigger. And then upon investigation even more, that's the old upper bracket and that's the new upper bracket. So uh, every now and again, we get these jobs in where every corner is just one more thing. So we've got one mocked up already. I'm going to carry on drilling. So as you can see, we're at a point where we are ready to rivet the new brackets and sleeve in place. But one of the things I wanted to show you first, because we're kind of doing this as we're going along, um, is the rudder pedal issue. There was a lot of play in the rudders. And one of the things that we've been sent through is this bushing. And it's a very simple solution to the problem. It's very simple. You have this bush on either side, literally just pops in place. No more sloppy rudder pedals. So we've done all the mock-up, we've done all the testing, we've followed all the instructions, we've checked and done everything we could possibly can to make sure that everything's right. The only thing left to do now is to rivet this up. I can't say that I'm looking forward to it, but let's see how it goes. <laughs> our head of spanners um, who did a preliminary 